This is uh, MMA Scoops, Ryan McKinnell, sitting down with KJ Noons. KJ, thanks for sitting down and uh, taking the time to talk with us. Hey, no problem. Um, you know, it's got to feel good to come back and revenge that loss, I mean, in the fans' eyes with that spectacular KO, Alberto. Yeah, man, it's, it feels good to uh, get out there and, um, you know, just uh, let people know that, that I can fight, you know, and that first fight, you know, I didn't really get to show... Uh, show too much so um had to come out strong in the next fight now did you take crazy horse lightly in that last fight or was that just a lucky punch what's the situation in your mind no i, I didn't take uh, crazy horse lightly i trained really hard yeah i felt like i was in top shape and um i just got got caught with a great shot and that's uh that's like the one of the biggest factors in mma which you know it's um get caught with that shot, you're done, you know, any yeah. shot. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about earlier. I mean, I knew about that pride search you did and how you were rated best striker. I mean, I'd heard a little buzz about you on the Internet. But, you know, like me and a lot of fans, the first time we got to see you, uh, you know, you were getting knocked out. And, uh, I mean, like I said, that's really got to feel good and just dominate. Um, I wanted to talk about the domination because it looked like about halfway through the first round, you were just – totally content with letting your hands go you seemed to have them down you were doing like an ollie shuffle i mean did it feel like you totally had it wrapped up i felt like uh well if you look in the video i can't right. it's not confirmed yet i'm gonna go see my doctor right now on the first hook yeah two minutes into i, I um i'm pretty sure he's gonna confirm it i broke my hand my left hand oh and wow. um i mean it might be shattered i don't know and you were throwing huge left hand bombs that whole fight yeah, I mean, I I broke it instantly. It was I told my corner after the first round. I knew it was broke after that. Um, so I mean, it really didn't slow me down too much. Um, I mean, I was I'm just I was determined to win. You know, the adrenaline and the determination carried me through the whole fight. Um, but uh, as far as uh, as far as knowing when I had the fight, I mean, uh, a lot of people are speculating, saying, oh, Edson wasn't in shape, and this and that. I mean, if you look on the fight, he shot a lot of times, and a lot of people don't know how much uh, energy that takes out of you, man, to get back up, you know, after somebody shoots and to defend and, you know, wrestle. Oh, yeah, for sure. Back up, it's, it's not like you're not going to be right back at where you just left off. You're going to wear and tear and get a little tired, you know? Yeah, and that brings me to my next question. I mean, you were stuffing takedown after takedown after takedown. And when he did get you down, I mean, it, did, it didn't matter if, you know, he had a good double leg, whatever he had on you, you were just popping right back up. Did you train more for the ground because it was bare toe? I mean, what, I mean what, what possessed that? Have you always had that, or was that just uh, this fight or what? I mean, that was amazing. Yeah, I've always had really good um, jiu-jitsu. I mean, I've, I've, for my jiu-jitsu and my wrestling, since I started, I've trained with the best. You know, Sakurai, Matt, um, Matt Hume, um, you know, up there in Seattle uh, with Josh Barnett. And then right after that, you know, I was with Tyrone Glover, Brandon Vera, Mike Fowler. I mean, those, those are some of the best names in the, in the world. Oh, right. That's a, you, I, I got you. I mean, you're still with City Boxing, correct, right? Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I've been, yeah. been with a, a Brazilian black belt jiu-jitsu um, Baruki from Brazil. So, wow, I didn't know that. But, yeah, so I've always I've always trained it, and I got some buddies that are great D1 wrestlers, and I I was a really good football player in high school, so I've always trained it. I just prefer to you know do stand up. Right, and I heard that comes from your pops. Uh, I heard you he was a big um, you know influence in our in your life, and I mean there aren't a lot of male figures out there, you know, for a lot of guys out there. So I mean, talk about what he meant for you, and you know how he's inspired you. Uh, it's just he's put me in um, he's put me in from the beginning, and uh, he kind of you know lives uh, lives through me. You know, what I mean to see what he uh, you know just accomplishing dreams and stuff. So. Um, He's super proud, but just like any dad, you know, he's always got a oh yeah something to say on how to make it better. And you know, you can't say too much, but you just want to get better yourself, you know. Most definitely, and he was a pro fighter, right? Yeah, he was. That's cool. And you grew up uh, in Hawaii. What was that like? It was good, man. Just you know, the beach, the weather, uh, the people, uh, family. Yeah. So uh, you couldn't ask for a better upbringing, and uh, there's a lot of good talent out there, and just lifestyle that how you grew up is you grew up fighting. So it's, you know, it's um, kind of like the culture over there. 
Right. Talk about what it was like being a, a you know a white kid in the Samoan culture. Like yeah, I mean not to bust down surfing, but like Laird Hamilton, he talks about you know what you know being like a white guy on the island. What was that like? Did you have to fight a lot because of that? Uh, not really, because you know I was one of the local boys growing up. My mom is uh, from Hawaii, but my dad's East Coast, so um, okay, okay. You know, when you when you grow up when you grow up with them and you grow up there, it's a little bit different from uh, you know being maybe straight from the mainland or something. So um, okay. So even growing up there with them, it doesn't matter if you're white or a local. Everybody's still fighting. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So needless to say, you definitely dig on that uh, laid back lifestyle you got down there. Um, so you're in San Diego now, training with City Boxing. How's that going? Uh, do you have any idea who your next fight's going to be? I don't. Um, you know, like I said, I, I can't really, it's not confirmed yet, but my hand. So. Um, oh, that's right. Uh, looking at maybe a suspension or some sort of, uh, obviously, heal-up time? Yeah, i, I got to heal up. I'm going to go talk to my doctor here in a few hours and, uh, you know, just go from there. And um, if not, you know, there's a lot of great fighters down here in San Diego and City Boxing and just help out and then uh, keep on improving my game and hopefully uh, I'll just take whatever uh, whatever Elite XC throws at me and uh, you know no matter what it's going to be an exciting fight yeah um, talking about city boxing who's uh, who's some of your boys down there who should we be watching out for who's hitting you hardest in training we actually have um, some great uh, Russians they um, Dennis uh, Grabchak and uh, Eugene Gill okay yeah uh, they're stand up they're from Russia. They've been here about a year, and they're learning the ground really quick. They both have a couple hundred amateur Muay Thai fights, and they're pro boxers now. Wow. So they're just amazing, just learning the ground game. So they're up and coming, and we got a few 17-year-olds and uh, really good uh, jiu-jitsu guys. It's just the whole, I'd say the whole talent pool down here in, you know, Southern, just California alone is, you know, there's, there's a bunch of great guys down here. So uh, No doubt. Help, up, up, help uh, up and coming talent when I'm not uh I'm not doing my thing, and then, um, you know, when I do my thing, just get, get back in the gym and just try and get better myself. Fair enough, fair enough. So uh, there's been a lot of talk about you doing boxing and MMA together. How are you going to manage it? It's uh, it's tough, you know, but um, it's, as long as I can stay injured free, you know, heal this hand up, and and uh, you just got to be uh, just committed, you know, just stick to your goals and, and keep, on work, uh, keep on moving forward, and, um, you know, you're going to have – up and downs and eventually you'll you'll reach your goals so it's just it's definitely it's double time it's definitely hard work but um you know that's that's something that i want to do just to uh you know reach reach my goal right well you talk about goals and plans i mean what what was your you know barring the hand injury i mean what were you going to plan to do were you going to plan to do you know every three months an mma fight and then the next three a boxing match i mean or was it were you just going to leave it up to gary i mean what were your thoughts on that it's it's pretty much pretty much up to up to Gary and uh, Elite, you know, um, right. the boxing, I can pretty much do that, uh, I'm still pretty young in my career, only um, nine professional fights, so, you know, you really don't get in the top ten or any title shots until you're around 20 fights, Right. Uh, so those are pretty easy to take as long as you're conditioned, but the MMA, you know, it's, um, you know, it's a pretty jump up, pretty, you jump up pretty quick, so I'm, I'm assuming Gary's not going to be throwing me, and he hasn't anybody light, you know, Crazy Horse first, Ed Simberto supposedly better next, and uh, I'm assuming he's going to throw me a, another hard one the next one, you know? Yeah, that'd be great for the fans. I mean, it was a real wake-up call to see you dominate a guy like Edson. I mean, he brought a lot to the table. I mean, you were a, you were a big underdog. I mean, it's a fact. And you just yeah. came out and, I mean, not to offend Edson or anything, I mean, you just whooped up on him, you know what I mean? Yeah, I felt like, um, I, felt like I was ready for the fight, and, um, you know, a lot of... A lot of people uh, saw me as an underdog, but they've, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and right. training, so I, I knew I was confident in myself and my coach and my uh, a lot of people that I've worked out with um, know I was ready for this fight. All right, well, tell us all what it feels like. I mean, you're in the you're in the third round. I mean, you're pretty much doing whatever you want. You're you're entertaining the crowd. I mean, which is great. And then, I mean, you land that beautiful knee. I mean, what does it feel like to win a fight like that and on that such a high note? I mean, I saw how jacked you were after, you know what I mean, just how pumped you were. Just talk about that. It's just, um, it's like a weight uh, taken off my shoulders, you know, and especially right. not not just the win, but to finish the win on how I did it. Yeah. But to solidify that, you know, that um, you know, there was a lot of hype on the first, on the first show. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of hype put on me 
on how can I supposed to be this and that, and I come out and I get knocked out, you know, and I don't even really get to show anything. Now, now, how do you take your losses like that? Are you do you like um are you a guy that needs like a week, or are you just right back in there? And